allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bob. <coughs> Uh, before you, you have the minutes of the uh, September 18th meeting, I have a motion to approve. So motion by Sam, second by Joe Barnes. Sam Small and Joe Barnes. You got it? Okay. okay. Any discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including a late list. It's a short list, short one, but did everybody get the late list? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So moved. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Sam Small. Excuse me, hang on. Let's see if I can get it. They moved from one account to another. And uh, on where we got the oil for Marathon for shipping and sealing, um, is this when the invoices come in, September 24th? Yes. Uh, uh, is that usually the uh, norm to come in that much later? I know we quit shipping back in the latter part of August or early part of September. Okay. Um, ready? No Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Motion carries. The bills, claims, papers, and transfers are approved as presented. Yeah, uh, well, that's a little bit what I was concerned about. Y'all have the treasurer's report in front of you, financial statement for September. Um, we don't have to approve it, but we just need to just know we got it. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Second. Take it further. You get it. Everybody made the motion, so take one to say. I'll find want. out next week. Where you want? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he was. Be fair about it. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Pose like sign. Motion carries. Now we're ready for the clerk's September report. Do y'all have that? Everybody should have a copy of it. As always, it's subject to audit. Isn't it? Yes, so. absolutely. So, motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Any discussion? Being none. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna get, in case y'all didn't get one, I think I got three of them. Say, I didn't no, you should. <laughs> yeah, you got you got Sam and Jason. Okay. okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. It's approved, or it's a, it's accepted. We we acknowledge we got it. What about the 2018 tax bills that's on here? That's. Um, Beth, she dropped it off. She's not feeling well. Otherwise, she would have been here today. So we're just acknowledging having received it so we can put it in the book. She needs a book yeah. number. So. We got, yeah, we got to put it in the book. Do I need to sign it? Nope. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some kind of spending, man. <laughs> Motion with Jason. Second with Joe Barnes. Motion with Jason. Second with Joe Barnes. Got it. That's really got it. Okay. Uh, next, we have the sheriff's quarterly fee report. Do we have a copy of it here? I think we do. Move to acknowledge. Motion by Larry Cam. 
Second to Sam Small to acknowledge the receipt of the report. Okay. You need my copy back. Okay, Sheriff Unmine Cold Report. Was it in that same thing? No. Where's it at? Yeah, they were together. One stage was one of the top. Yeah. Well, I'm going to unmine the poll from Beth's office. As well. I'd make sure that I know who was doing it. This is the Nashville, but I'm going to go to the Yes. Yeah. Is that the same Nashville thing as what? Nashville. It no. was a clip to the. Uh, Separate. Two or three people I know the church. Yes, and all they have taken. Okay. Okay, I'm so I'm going to receive it from Bess because she's mm -hmm. the clerk. And she's got Tracy's signature on her copy. It's the official one that goes to the state. That's good. So they're both names on it. Yeah. Let's have a. Let's do that one then. Okay. Got a motion on that one. No. Need a motion on this one. Make a motion. We receive it. Motion by Jason Bullock. <laughs> Second by Sam Small. Any discussion or questions on that one? Being none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Next, where's the truck bed? Judge. Hand that to Joe, though. We missed both on one of them. First one, we got a motion. Second, we did the end mine. I thought we did. Okay. Let's vote on that one. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That one carries, too. Yes. There, there's two copies. Yes. The one from Bess is the same thing as that's attached to the sheriff for the 2017. Mm -hmm. It's the same item, but I instead of using the sheriff, I had to do Okay. He signed the box. Okay. Well, that's including. And if Joe, <laughs> Joe Barnes is going to open and read the bid on the EMA truck. But I say bid because I just see one envelope. Yeah, that'll fit his, fit him, but it don't fit that. Okay, this one's from Moore. Of course, it's the only one we got. David said. It's a 2019 Ram 1500 SSV, uh, $28,264. Uh, Charlie, was we not going to bid a 2500 Yeah, I, th I thought we were going to do back the half. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just thought. Does it meet? Does that meet all the criteria of the bid? As far as you know. Uh, other than I thought we were just bidding the twenty five hundred, just so it would it'd be useful in whatever department we moved it to. You know, before snow plows, me and you and right. and everything, but. Uh, I, I, I thought we'd rediscussed it and decided because the purpose it was probably going to next would not be needed for that. I've been through four. Because a litter abatement truck's going to rotate. One litter abatement truck went there recently and another one will here shortly. We ought to plan that. Let's see what the report I'm going somewhere every year. I'm going somewhere every year. We're going to take a vacation every year. Let's go to South Carolina and make sure it's beautiful. I was just seeing when they got a little bit more use on them, you know. And I'm going to take one. If they did get moved to the road department or the road department or even the parks department, they'd be able to find a hold-up a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we need to get back to the road department. We need to spend so many times. We know. Sorry, I was wrong. I actually thought we'd change it back to half. Say it again. This is a half time. I thought we'd decided to go start going over the 2500 that way it could be used in like about order it would be a good pen for whatever apartments they went into what's the deal man get up for a second i think the last three quarter time we've been it's a good pen that's good pen i was afraid uh hello son i had to speak to her three quarter time 
How does that go with your match, though? I mean, as far as I never tried a three quarter cut in all the other counties. I mean, we can try anything. Uh, I mean, I've seen them. EMA trucks. Oh, yeah, I have. That's three quarter times. Yeah. Either Wait a minute. I do wherever the court points. But, I mean, it's whatever court, you know, I just was looking at them. That's fit. And then, you, you know, whatever we got. Does, is, we definitely need 2500. We need to start going towards that. Because even after, that's whoever what, gets it, whoever's after gets it. What we do is, on the, what we all agree, on the solid waste truck, because it, it pays for itself every 14 months. Yeah. That's designed to go to the road department. And I didn't know the way we talk. One conversation was these half tons that go to the park because Bo even made a statement that the half tons works better for him pulling stuff and going so which way. So I, I can do where which way. And, and this road. next one he passed it down go to Adam Control because they're in, they need it real bad. But I mean for pulling, three quarter going to be better. For yeah, pulling and, and carrying loads and everything, three quarter time would be better. Okay. You're looking at buying, I mean, we have to rebid it, uh, looking at about $3,000 more. And we'd be out that. Does that get in, in uh, does that create an issue with uh, time frame? Only I can tell you what we put in for this last time, we put in for a half ton on the strand. I don't know if I can change it. Because we already submitted the paperwork, that's back before when we didn't know for sure. Which way was going to go? We went ahead and submitted on the whole. Yeah. Numbers. Uh, well, that, I guess that's my question. Will it interfere with the uh, uh, re reapplying or changing or whatever? I, I'll well, never try that. One thing about it uh, would take longer, Larry, and we're we're needing the one he's got to his pass down needs to be done fairly quickly because, well, where it's going to is needed really desperately. Do you want to hold off on this one and then come back to it at the next meeting, or you want yeah, to? Hear, you, I know you're needed. We'd have to rebid. We'd have to advertise the rebid. Well, we well, you, have to I really think if we do the well, half ton this time, we we need to be because you know this time it's going to somebody that maybe could use a half right. ton. But the next, next time, time, next time, three four. And even, time, even in the park, that. carrying yeah. We yeah. Yeah. trailers yeah. with mowers on and everything, three if four times. If y'all would do that, yeah. I would love it because of the timeliness of it. And I'm sorry about the confusion. I thought that we decided to do half time. I think the next time, though, we need to write it for the three quarter time. I, I agree with that. that. It affects it. You want somebody wants to make a motion to advertise for the other? Yeah. Or, to, or to accept so this bid. Yeah. Or, or a motion to accept this bid, one or the other. The only downside to it is, of course, three quarter ton burns a lot more cash than half ton or even well, two wheel drive. Larry, I'd, I'd say you're right on that, but I had a 09 half ton Dodge, and I've got a 2014. Three quarter ton dodging. Yeah. Not much difference in. Actually, I'll get a little bit better in my three quarter ton. Here's the problem. You wouldn't I think so. It's like Larry said. I mean, we put in for the half ton for the grant. Uh, we went three quarter ton. I'll go into which way I'm mistaken the facts here. We went three quarter ton, got it. I don't know the grant. If we got the grant, I don't know if it'll pay for it. Yeah. Well, that was, that was. Well, if the grant's already filled out with half grant's ton. Already filled out with yeah. Yeah. Well, then we well, probably better. Another, can you find that for future? No, yeah. You know, future, it'd be easy because I can submit a three quarter ton and it'd be okay then. Right. Okay. So in the future, we're going to look at going three quarter ton? Three quarter ton for EMA. It'd be nice too if we knew where the truck was going to go, whether we needed it. Well, just we'll do what Joe said. This for now, we'll just all get three quarter tons. That way they're all set up no matter where they go, wherever it gets three But I, I believe this one would work out fine for this. Okay, this under time. circumstances with the grant already being filled out, I'll. Oh, is is the is the Dodge is that much cheaper? Mm -hmm. I, yes. They bid for it every time. I the, mean, the reason I was asking Ford is went going to a total aluminum truck, and I mean if you kept putting parts on it, it'd be indefinite what that thing how it would last. You know, we've had three yeah. now so far. The road department's got one. The sheriff's department just bought one. They have second. Uh, Dodge and you know, all the fish and wildlife. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. yeah. No. The only reason, the only reason I was saying that is Ford's going to a total aluminum body, and it's like a semi or diesel. You could just part it and keep yeah. putting parts on it. To, How long would it last? To, to get it. To get it, we'd probably have to put uh, aluminum or something in it because Fords are higher than Dodges right now. I mean, have been for a few years yeah. on their business. Well, you got to see what you get. Well, uh, no. The only thing I know more. <laughs> uh, 
is bidding it, and they're bidding the cheapest one, and they're four dealers, you know, yeah. two. Yeah. So oh, I'd say I, that. I assume they're bidding it, their cheapest truck. Yeah. Yeah. We could, if we had to specify aluminum in our specs to get a Ford, I'm assuming. I would say it's going to be somewhat, as Joe says, it's going to be somewhat higher, too. All right. Any more discussion? Being none? Roll call. Barnes? Yes. Jason did. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morkew? Yes. Small? Yes. Yes. Some carry. Good. Well, I'm up here. More well, won't you stay there, cause we don't get this out. Don't go anywhere. But to get to you, the next thing we got a we got a surplus of copier for the clerk's office, cause that's it. That. You got that? No, I ain't got surplus of copier, but I got several other things to surplus. So. Okay, uh, okay, the copier for the. Uh, hey, while he's up here, you want to let him do his resolution too? I'm going to. Let's do this. He'll do surplus things resolution. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you have who has the information on the clerk's copy? Top here, we're doing surplus. Uh, Nancy and Miranda did. It was uploaded to the thing. I didn't print it off. What is it? Just uh, it's just, it's just all it is is the old copier there. that's they don't quite good with parts. Can't really they want to go try to gut deals. We don't gut deals. Okay. So we have to vote to sur surplus the county clerk's Coffee. copier that she wants to get rid of. Yep. Does I have a motion? I make a motion. Motion with Joe Barnes. Second Sam Mile. Any discussion? This is on the copier? Yep. For, for the clerk's office. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Okay, you're on, Charlie. Judge, I passed out two two more things. It's a 2004 <coughs> four-wheeler, Honda four-wheeler, 350. It don't run. We've had it. Uh, like to try to surplus it for sale. Then we also got an old truck in there that it starts, but when you take the battery box off of it, it dies. As uh, one we used to have around here, the jail had, we had, now it's out the airport and growing weeds around it. So it's kind of like to surplus them. And you know, if we don't need them, we'll get them off our insurance and see what we can get out of them on gut deals. And have a bin? Yeah, we got the bins. Is this 21,000 miles on this Dodge, or is this... Oh, that's 218. Yeah, 218,000. That's a forward, actually. No. Yeah, it's a forward. <gasps> well, excuse me. That's one Rip used to have. It had a snowplow on it. And I don't know how long that was. I stepped on myself there, didn't I? <laughs> okay. Move to do the full wheel. Judge. Motion by Larry Cam to surplus property this uh, uh, four wheeler. Uh, can we do them both on the same motion? We can do them all together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 And and the Ford F one fifty. F two fifty. F two fifty. It is. It? Okay. Motion. Like who who seconded? <laughs> I seconded. Second with Joe Barnes. Uh, any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, go ahead and put them on. Uh, you, they are surplus. You can go ahead and put them on Gov deals and sell them. And uh, you go ahead and present your resolution while you're here. I got a resolution for the court to sign. I've been working with the uh, Department of Local Government, the USGS, to get a river gauge here in Hartford, down here on 231. We've got it. It's $174,000. The DLG is going to give us $87,000. The USGS, the US Department of Local Government, or then the Geological Service is going to give us $43,500. Farm Bureau is donating the other $43,500 for us. Now, what's that for, Charlie? River gauge. river gauge. The river gauge. Okay. Uh, and we need to pass it to the court. So there's a resolution there for the judge to sign. It just got run through us. We are no, under no obligation for money. We even got that stated in the resolution. So it's not going to cost the court a penny. No, sir. Just the motion that he signs it. And I believe you, you've been after it's installed. Justin, I didn't get you get it from you. Uh, uh, that is correct. Uh, it's an annual fee, and they're going to take care of it. It's in their always call it. Do you, you, you have a copy of it with you? No, sir. Uh, Miranda's got it. 
It's on her. You emailed it to her, though. She don't have a hard oh, copy. Yeah. Of it. I, I, I typed that for him. Well, we got something better than that coming. I okay. I got to meet and next month on that. So. You've got the paper copy. I've got it. Okay, I'll sign it when yeah. 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 okay, yeah. I need a motion. Oh, yeah. Postman Joe Barnes. Second to Sam Small. Any for discussion? So what you got coming for me in Rochester? Uh, I don't know. This is this uh, this gauge is very important to the farmers in the community. Uh, they've been asking for it and uh, talking about it, and it's. Uh, I don't totally understand it, but they need to know how high the river is at all times. Is Okay. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries. Two. Put in a river gauge. Here you go. Uh, now I want to introduce to you Larry Miller. He's going to present us with. Uh, uh, an idea here on a uh, resolution. I'd like to thank the court for allowing me to speak here today. Uh, and what I've got is what I ask you to do consider passing a resolution to support our miners' pensions, which are our pensions that are scheduled to go bankrupt by 2022 or sooner if there's a uh, market downturn. There's a couple pieces of legislation in Congress that addresses this problem. What I'm hoping to do is get you to pass a resolution and send it to our elected congressmen and our senators to agree with our elected people talking to them. So, <coughs> most of them are on board, uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions about it. So, this is on just the pension? Well, the resolution that I have is on the pension, my work. Okay. And then there's one on, part of it is the Black Lung Disability Trust Fund. Okay. And that's scheduled to be cut in half by the end of 2018. Yeah. Uh, and what happened there was it was passed in 1973. Uh, and the thinking was that it would, black lung would be gone by 2018 if we need it. But it's gotten worse for some people. I don't know if it's the safety standards, the laws, cut coal faster or what. But uh, so we're, we're asking for help on that and the Reclaim Act. I don't know, you guys have any a copy of this? I think I got a copy of the Okay. And the Reclaim Act, we're asking, and we did with all three things last week, uh, to turn money loose sooner to reclaim the uh, abandoned mine lands, which we've got some here on the uh, On this page here, I don't know if you see it, I just the it. Right. Nine million dollars. And that's all on abandoned? That's all on abandoned mine lands? Yeah. Land? Uh, and this is a GAO, no recognition of course, uh, estimate. Okay. Uh, and we're asking also for an economic component. I don't know if we're going to get it, but an economic component to actually build something on this land that they have produce jobs, or you like to say, adventure shares or, or agriculture. Uh, Peabody Wildlife Management Area is an excellent uh, example. Now, I, you know, we're asking for it, but we're getting it. Right. Uh, but, you know, we just need to nudge them a little bit. We can't have the, the pensions. Um, well, personally, it's a, it's a personal income extracted for me, but there's also a, it's an income extracted for a lot of retired miners. So, so that's all in this uh, uh, yeah. resolution. Uh, on the pension and the black lung and everything, where where is the funds? Okay, you've been talking to them about how they're they're going to get more funds into those pension. There's a couple of unique funding sources. Okay. Like this went through Congress. A couple of legislations. One is the uh, committee on the solution for multi-employer pension plans. Now they have to come up with a solution if they're going to do it by November 2018. Uh, they can use the uh, interest off the band of my land money and not the core money for reclamation. But that was done before in the 1992 Coal Act, and it works. Also, Florida is a 1% loan, uh, treasury loan, to be paid back. Uh, there's a more units involved than just mine workers. There's teamsters, and bankers, and musicians, and uh, steel workers. Uh, and so that would be paid back over, say, a 30, 40 year period. 
it's not taxpayer money. Uh, but the money, the majority of it, was lost during the uh, 2008 financial crisis. Wall Street, <coughs> is, uh, and a lot of banks got bailed out, a lot of insurance companies got bailed out, uh, even General Motors. But you know, we're having to come up with unique non-taxpayer sources to keep our pension. But uh, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. But we've been up there the last two years. My wife and I have been up there three times, four times, talking about this. Uh, it seems that a lot of our politicians, our congressmen here, is, is I believe he's on board. He talked real good. Yeah, Senator McConnell talked real good. Uh, but then there's some that didn't didn't seem like they were as interested. So. But, you know, what we're trying to do is just nudge them a little bit, maybe, maybe help. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody else? Any other questions for Larry? When are they presenting this? this when are you, are you taking this to state? When are you? Well, what we did is provide some addresses. Yeah. I'm hoping you guys can put it on a physical court stationery. Okay. Mail it. Uh, now this is just a resolution, right, David? This yes. doesn't have the information on on everything he just explained. No. In in detail, does it? No. And see, now there's another piece of legislation. <coughs> if this fails, that we're trying to get through, which is the American Miners Protection Act, and it, it could use the same funding sources as I talked about before. We're hoping. Our first solution is to sign a multi employer pension plan. But what happens is, if, 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 if they put it forth in 2017, eight Democrats, eight Republicans, and both the House and Senate, five each have to agree by November. And so it's really hard to get five Democrats and five Republicans to turn agree on anything. So it may fail. And if it does, then we're hoping for the American Miners Pension Act. Because these other unions have got a little time on this, we got to 2022 or maybe soon. Uh, yeah, the, you said that was a multi-employer yeah, pension uh, plan? multi-employer pension plan. And what that is, is a, a lot of these, uh, uh, like if you go to a different, like I work for Peabody Co. and then I work for Consolidated, but my, my pension and my health care travel with me. Right. So it allows these kind of jobs, steel workers, working one steel mill, another steel mill, to draw pensions. And, and there's a there's a uh, backup for that called the Pension Guarantee Trust Corporation. But when they dump us into that, it's going to be 100,000 miners. And uh, so it's going to bankrupt that too. So we're desperate to try to find some kind of solution to keep our pensions. I, I don't know how well I'm doing to explain this. No, 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 the reason I'm asking you. is I, I, don't, I don't understand all the, you know, well, I've heard a lot about the, the pensions and everything. So I, I, I was just trying to get more information on it. This multi pension plan, there's several unions like the steel workers and the right. workers and uh, bankers and fiction. And uh, it, it, the preferred solution is to, to get all of them at once. That way, you know, if they, if, they, if they fix ours and these other unions come to the Congress and say, well, what about us? So we're trying to get it done all at once. Mm -hmm. So there's several different avenues on the way to <coughs> trying to, yeah. to fix it. And basic, basically what I think that we're, he, what they're asking us to do is to say, urge our uh, legislators, you know, our congressmen, senators, to come up with a solution. Uh, more than us suggesting what that solution yeah. is, to yeah. say yeah. the UMWA miners, they were promised their pensions and uh, as you know, we're dealing with something like that in the state of Kentucky right now too. Yeah. But the uh, but the the uh, UMWA miners were promised their pension, and uh, we feel like it's a promise, um, and uh, that the government should uh, yeah. make sure that it's it's given to them, uh, and then it's basically their problem to figure out what how they're going to get it. If you've got time, I can get the Crude Lewis Agreement, where it was negotiated between the mine workers. And the federal government, 1946. That was back when the, about going back to work for the to provide yeah. coal to yeah. make the, the steel for the yeah. floor, right? Well, yeah, if we just come out of the military, uh, 
uh, miners were frozen into jobs. They wanted to raise. Harry Truman was starting what we now know was the Cold War with Russians. But he thought it was hot. He had to have coke and coke steel, steel coke for him. So he goes to John L. Lewis and asked him what's it going to take not to have work stoppage. He said, I want help care and pension for miners. No coal company signed on to this. They didn't want it. So the actual agreement was between Julius Krug, Secretary of the Interior, and uh, John L. Lewis. Now, Julius Krug signed the document as Administrator of Mines, not Secretary of the Interior. The reason is, no coal companies were there. They didn't want it. They didn't like it. So it was an agreement between the federal government and uh, the mine workers. And then you fast forward to 1989. It's a cold strike. I've taken a lot of you guys' time. Oh, no, no. no. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, it was a bitter strike. Uh, federal government got involved. George Bush. He appointed Secretary Dole, Elizabeth Dole, to form a commission. They went and studied it and come back and said the coal miners have a reasonable expectation for lifetime health care and pension benefits. In other words, they validated Crew Lewis, and they used the uh, interest money off the AML for the 1992 coal act. So it's been done, it works, it validated the promise. Uh, but we're now at the mercy of the federal government that, that don't remember who we were. And so yeah. uh, we're simply we're asking for help yeah. to remind them. Yeah. You know, Larry, you and I don't even remember much about that 1948 stuff, though. No, this is about, what I read. I know, I know. About 51, about as far as I remember back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I thank you for listening, and I appreciate no. any help you can give us. Hey, hey appreciate, Larry. Let me, uh, when, does, when does this need to be done? Okay. The, the, I mean, because I think we all support in our pensions, because that's, but I mean, is that... I'd, I'd like to read over it, and I didn't know if we're that's going to be used. We might tweak the wording in it. Okay. Is that, I mean, and, I think we're uh, all that's what did. Yeah. We're all, yeah. I'd like to uh, dig into the, the couple different ways that they're wanting to do okay. it. So okay. if we do recommend it, you know, we're recommending maybe the way we want to see them do well, it. If we put this to the next meeting to have a vote on it, after we looked at it, I mean, make sure we look at it at the county attorney and tweak it. Is that, a, is that something? Well, the multi-employer pension commission on the solvency of multi-employer pension plans, which we're one of, my work for one yeah. of, uh, has to come with a solution by November the 18th. So I don't know. If Our meeting's a, the 20th. Uh, the other one, the other piece of legislation there, which is the coal miner. But yeah, but I don't think you're, yeah. I don't think you're, well, I could be wrong. That was the one where you talked about the five Democrats, five Republicans. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. agree on it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's eight original housing centers on each side. Right. Uh, and, and quite frankly, the House GOP, the Senate seems to be on board, and, but the House GOP is kind of dragging their feet. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. So, anyway. I believe it concur. Um, we can tweet it. Though. Yeah. We're going to work on this and we want to do something. And we, uh, we need to we really later on have a special call. Yeah, we'll do it if we need to. We have to have a special have it earlier. Uh, yeah, we will. I don't want to call you. No, no, we appreciate you. You're, you're fine. You're yeah. fine. And, and we definitely, I think, unanimously, yeah. I know we unanimously want to help if we can, <laughs> any way we can. Let's just see what the best way we can do to do it. I appreciate it. Thank I know you. I want to because I'm a retired United he, Mine worker. Yeah, he's one of them. Yeah. You don't want to tell me what Yes, sir. Well, it's anybody. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm a school system, so that, that's being... I think if you, if you work for it, you, you were supposed to yeah. get it. You, you deserve it because you promised it, yes. That we promised, but that's other thing. We left money on the negotiating table to get this pension back in the 70s. So it's not something... It wasn't given to us. It was her. Uh, I talked about it being a lot of stuff. Here I am again. Oh, you got a cup of oh, yeah. yeah. But also, yeah. the early glasses there's a income stream, so many dollars. Do I? Yeah, my early glasses are on. As a coal company goes bankrupt, then that income stream, we lose it. Let me tell you real quick. So the more bankruptcy, the less the income stream. There's still a stream there for our pension. I know. Back just, there's back like, in the summer. Uh, four out of eight. 10,000 active miners trying to support. Oh, she wants the rest. We were sitting there. She had to go see us. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Her purse. I'll stand there with her purse. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to work it and do everything we can to help with this cause. Okay. okay. I said, I know. I said, I don't like this color. I said, I got a pink one I use. Oh. Chase. 
You want to explain this uh, resolution here? Um, There's actually uh, two resolutions that have to be uh, Is it really just housekeeper resolutions that both pertain to the TVA bill, uh, which I'm sure you are all aware of that, that passed in the most recent session and was signed into law uh, a couple months ago. The first one um, is simply designating the Ohio County Industrial Development Authority as um, the subrecipient of these funds. It reads, adoption of a resolution of the Ohio County Fiscal Court designating the Ohio County Industrial Development Authority to receive Tennessee Valley Authority funds under the Regional Development Agency Assistance Program, which is what they've, this is the name that they've ascribed to the TVA bill money that's coming down to the yeah. yeah. And, and then the second one is simply an authorizing resolution, um, uh, authorizing the filing of our application for the money. Yeah. One, the first one designating the Ohio County Industrial Development Agency yeah. or authority yeah. as the uh, agency that will ultimately receive those yeah. funds and then uh, authorizing the application to uh, the Department of Public In simplification, it has to do with these are the hoops we've got to jump to to get those TVA nut monies and switch them in the way that we've got them authorized in our budget. Does it need to go in that order? No. Does it have to go in that order? Uh, not necessarily. That just seems like the most. Okay. How much are the funds from TVA? We're getting uh, fifty-one thousand two hundred eighty-two dollars the first year. We'll get the, double the that. One so to do two. Where's the number? Uh, next year. And then one hundred and fifty-six. So it's not. The third year and every year after. Yeah, it's. Um, um, barring five, any changes. Five is it? Okay. This will be five. Yeah, and there was some question while the, uh, even after the bill was passed, before it was signed, of what type of agency could receive these funds since the Economic Development Alliance is essentially an actor on behalf of the fiscal court. Uh, but they wrote language in there that it had to be an industrial development authority, which um, is an authority set up by Kentucky statute. That uh, is something that is set dormant in the county for a while because it hasn't been used. They were primarily set up. Uh, to allow uh, to pass through of industrial revenue bonds and things of that nature, but we're mm -hmm. bringing it back and essentially putting uh, most of the receipt of board on that authority just to use it as a vehicle to accept these funds. And that's what we have to do to make it work the way we planned it in our budget. So, do I need a motion? I need a motion to approve uh, resolution six. Five, five. I'm sorry, five. Five. Motion by Sam Small. Do they have a second? I don't have the resolution. Five. You have five? I've got a copy of the name. That was the one designating the giving you the one authorizing the application. Authorizing the application is five and then IDA is six. I don't know. I'll make the second. Okay, second with Jason. My only concern is, Chase, that, uh, that uh, this allows the authority to, uh, to be in you guys' hands and it doesn't give the fiscal court very much leeway as far as economic development in the money end of it. That's so. precisely well, how they wrote the bill. We, they yeah. wrote the bill that, but see, we actually do because we have to do transfers and stuff to trade out because we, we budgeted yeah, these money yeah, the way we budgeted it. Yeah, and this is the only way that TVA money can be circulated. Yeah. It's basically hoops you got to jump through to get it done. We've had, I mean, this has been, this is the bill was written so that the funds had to pass through to a subrecipient, Economic Development Agency, eventually named Industrial Development Authority to actually keep the hand or keep the, the fiscal courts out of uh, the spendage, uh, spending of this money. Out of the economic development in its own, its own right, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's, my, that's my problem with, with, with it is I think the fiscal court should have some, some say to a big extent as far as economic development. Mm -hmm. Not to take anything away from you, but also there's other avenues out there maybe we may want to 
can pursue, you know what I mean? So, but the way I understand this particular resolution is that it'll all go to that particular entity and, and uh, the court won't have very much say so as, as far as the money goes to 150 and then henceforward, so. Well, our, our bylaws are structured so that the fiscal court has representation on the Economic Development Alliance's board, which is represented by Sam Small. So any time that you all have uh, recommendations on, on it, programming or how that money is spent, Sam can be your voice. To but he's only one vote on, on you guys' board, so. Correct. And that uh, that's my only concern. I think it just takes the... Uh, takes the county almost completely out of the economic development See, monies the that's coming. Thing, the, the, thing that, the legislature pretty much nailed it that way. I think the town speaking kind of the way I see it too is, you know, the constituents folks is on the physical court and then they, then they want to hold us to criteria, and then we, you know, when we have to tell them say, well, it's out of our hands because it's in the board and then they're not very happy and they don't understand that. Well, to the um, the impetus behind them writing the law that way sort of stems from the evolution, which I know that y'all have heard me explain this before, of the Coal Severance Fund, which was originally written for economic development, and fiscal courts at the time didn't really know what to do besides what fiscal courts do, and that's pave roads and put in fire hydrants and you know potholes and uh, fix potholes and things like that. Um, so it was an attempt to uh, let some agency, should the county have one, which most do, that is primarily and solely involved in economic development activities have the say in how those funds are spent, um, just as a separation of priorities on those. Yeah. Um, but the way the legislature done it, basically it's, it's take, this is what we have to get to money. That's what it's going to say. In Unless we change the legislators, we won't receive these funds unless we do it this way. That's correct. So if we vote no, we, we won't get the funds. Right. And 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 this is in our the way it's going to be traded out. It's to, it's going to work in the money in the budget that we've already approved. But I agree with what I do agree with what Larry. I mean, I wish the legislators had written that. That's where we would have a little bit more mm -hmm. coming through here because we we take the plaque on it if it's not if it's wrote that way and that's the way and the only way it can go through then why are we having to do a uh, resolution it's pretty much to say that's we accept that we accept the money for our county uh and we've done what they ask us to do to to, do, to get it well i'm not i'm not certainly not against the money coming into the county nor would i put the money into roads and water or whatever i believe the money should go and is intended uh, intended for economic development. My only problem is we just, as a fiscal court, with the money coming in the county, we, if you get right down to it, we have no, as a fiscal court, we have no say so whatsoever where that particular money goes. And and that's 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 my problem with Chase. Outside of Sam, you know, um, you know, if, if this were money going to what used to be the Industrial Foundation, that was a private organization that had no uh, reporting requirements or uh, representation by the fiscal court, then I could certainly understand some serious apprehensions about how this uh, is structured. But, uh, you know, also the fiscal court being the primary and, and sole source currently outside of grant funds of the Economic Development Alliance, I mean, we're certainly going to work with you all uh, to make sure that these funds are spent as efficiently as possible. But uh, again, I'll just say, you know, if you ever have any recommendations or if there's any projects that you all think should be a priority for these funds, certainly welcome to take those uh, through Sam. Okay. But <clears throat> I'll tell you where I'm at on it if it's not timetable will allow. Um, let me look, let me, let me study this a little bit more. I'm, I'm, right now I'm a no vote, but uh, um, because of the participation that the court won't have in it. And that's, that's my, and maybe it's something even going to you where the court could be in conjunction with the fiscal court with you guys to where that before any monies could be allocated for, for economic development. I, I want, I would want as just one magistrate would want the court involved in it. So. 
Yeah, if Chase well, is not on a timetable. Uh, well, we're a pretty tight timetable. But matter of fact, uh, Matt Castle. The project Castle, scope and the budget did have to be submitted by November 9th, I believe, which I've already submitted. Um, but as far as them getting these resolutions, uh, because the money's not going to come down until February, is what we've been told. But I will get um, some clarification from DLG on if these resolutions have to be passed by November 9th. As long as you are right with potentially having a special call meeting before then to, yeah. to get it passed. That would give me ample time to. Uh, well, let's. Uh, I'll do it my second. If that's if it, if you're not enough time crunch for this, I mean I understand what they're saying to go through. We will receive the money unless that happens. Right. But uh, you already submitted what your budget and everything. Well. We have to have all this pretty soon because Matt Caston's been calling about it. Let me see if we got some. Charlie, can you make us some copies? We uh, budgeted twelve thousand to go towards the hubs, uh, our business incubator, public spaces, operating expenses, and thirty-nine thousand two hundred eighty-two dollars uh, to go towards. Uh, the Ohio County Water Treatment Plant Expansions uh, Debt Service. If you all recall, um, Make five. that plant was Make built. Five. The water plant, when it, was, when it was built, was built larger than it was originally expected uh, uh, for economic yeah, development purposes. And I um, got clarification with Representative Rowland, who was one of the co-sponsors of this bill at the last uh, local issues conference, if it could be used as debt service on existing economic development projects and he said that it could and uh, to be frank we're doing this um, so that it frees up uh, occupational tax money that has not so many strings attached because they did write in this bill that it can't be used for personnel expenses so what we're trying to do is we're jump through the hoops that the state makes us do so we in the bottom line is we're going to fulfill what we already passed in our budget for that TVA money. But we have to go through all these uh, hoops to get it to come back to where it's supposed to go. So let me ask you, each year, but every year we have to pass a resolution each year That's my understanding. agreeing to where this money is to be spent? Yeah. From what I understand, every year we're going to have to submit one of these scope and budgets, which um, Joe Barnes has asked for a copy of those. I think I got the yeah. Someone handed it to me. So this, I think it's the same as what I got here. So this, um, this being our first time around, there's obviously a lot of things that we were uncertain about, and they, DLG themselves, were writing how this process was going to work. Uh, I think they pretty much built the structure off of how the coal service program works, uh, submitting for funds. You know, so you all. Um, pass a, a proposed budget for coal service well, pays every year and then as the money comes in you spend the money it's sort of a similar similar thing we have to submit a project list essentially of how that money is going to be spent at the beginning of every year i assume next year we'll have to do it in july but because of the nature of when it passed and when i got everything done this is the uh we're, you know here we are in october just now uh, does it have to come that? through the court before you can submit that to receive your code yeah, I mean, as far as there was a question of why is it even come to the court that's being designated to the sub agency, even with the industrial development authorities being entities established by statute, I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I wasn't yeah. there when they were. The really court still it. proves all this. And the water treatment goes. plant expansion. And is that what we paid for out of land fund? Yes. Landfill fund? Yes. So that's something we was already doing as fiscal court. Yes. We were looking at economic development. We did that ten, 10 years ago or more. I mean, that's how we were saying. That was a girl. That was a girl. That was a girl. That was a girl. Yeah, I'll work on it. I sure will. <coughs> Does say, uh, will, will, will the court be. Uh, I'd like to table it. Just, just to kind of look over a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that, I mean, it is going, I'd like to see that 39000 is going to something that we've already trying to pay towards, you know, the debt off, so. Well, we put this in our budget, didn't know we had to go through these hoops. And basically, this is to straighten it up where it goes exactly where you have already voted to put it in the end. 
Well, which brings me back to the question: If it's just annual, every year we do this or whatever, I, I don't, like to know I don't have a big do it every year. Yeah, I don't have a big problem with that. But once this resolution passes and such, and it's 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 set into stone from here on out, now that's that's what I need to know before I vote on. I'd like to know. We'd like to see the scope project. Year. What you're going to do with the money? Each well, year. first yeah, of all, what you're going to do with the money, but resolution. but second of all, if this resolution just extends it on out, and after we pass this resolution we have no say so whatsoever yeah you want to know about next year's money what they're going yeah. to do the and one of them is just to reestablish this uh, uh so this group so that we can fund, get, bring the money through it one of it that's all it does now that would be just one time but then the part for the money each year will be done every year yeah, that where the money goes every year said it has to be an IDA, an industrial development uh, we were told that when you came last time okay two and here's another one. Original on top? Yeah. How many sheets you got, baby? First, uh, let me see here. Three, five. Uh, Put my girly glasses on. Is this on the same? Yeah. Said that was original, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Here's some extra. That's eight. That's eight. Yeah. That's eight. This must be. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think we're just saying. Who has the original? Who has the original? Every year. Yeah. Just like a full seven. Nope. Yeah. I think David has it. I handed it to you. He handed me something. We've got that. that. We've got 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 that. we Okay. Yeah. Here's one of them. It's got the ink on. This is the. But the other resolution. So here it is. Nope. The same one. It's basically just like the house bill too. I mean, we have to do that. I mean, that's what I thought. I think they're yeah, like I said, I think Larry's looking at it. Larry Morphew's got it, I think. Larry's got the You give him, see if this is it. That's it. Let's just give him a copy back. So as long as they will accept the scope and budget, by the deadline, then I can give you all more time to to discuss the resolution. And if not, then you know we might have to have this kind of meeting. That's about to get that to get it installed. The vote we certainly don't want to be in is where we don't get this money because there wasn't a resolution. Yeah, that would be awful just you know to stall it just to, and make us lose it. Yeah. Whenever we've already committed in the budget, if we don't get this we'd have to find that somewhere else. Well like I say judge I don't have any problem with the money. It's uh, we want to try to acquire the money. So we're close to the deadline. Matt castle has been worried about it for three or four weeks because we didn't have it in time yet. Now this other resolution is is uh, directing it to go to the Ohio County Industrial Development Authority. Yeah, one of them is simply stating that the Ohio County District Court is designating the Ohio County Industrial Development Authority as the subrecipient of those funds. And according to what you're telling me, that can't be directed to the Ohio County Fiscal Court as the uh, right as the law is written. You'll even see in the two bullet points above there that um, that's where it states that it has to be an industrial development authority as established by a certain KRS. Is that the same thing you understand, Justin, on that? Have you, have you looked into it? I'm going to have to update. Chase and I looked at this probably earlier this year, but I'd have to update myself on, on the statutes again, and I can kind of let you guys know. Yeah, it says, whereas it recognized that regional development agency assistance program funds available to the county pursuant to KRS chapter 96 and uh, 2018 Kentucky General Assembly House Bill 200 impose certain obligations and responsibilities upon the county and will require one, the designation of an industrial development authority established under KRS 154 by 
How many is on the board? Eight. eight. In the eight. Development board. Just eight of the economic development lines. One court member. Yeah. So, I mean, we could set up a procedure where, say, in May or June, when, when uh, the budgeting is happening, that uh, your fiscal corporate representative bring you the projects of the budget of the Industrial Development Authority and you know, allow you to approve those at the same time and do full severance <laughs> project lists. I, uh, I, just, I just believe that the fiscal court should have a vote on it. That's, I guess, the bottom line, Chase, where I'm at. And how we go about to do that, uh, you may have some ideas. But I just want the court to uh, to have a little bit of say-so over where the well, particular money goes. The, the, and not to say they'll disagree with what your proposals are, but, but I, I do think the court needs to be involved in it. The General Assembly wrote it specifically to where it wouldn't be a fiscal court uh, uh, pretty much controlling it. We would have some say on the would say have say on the projects each year. Well, I'm I'm not saying complete control. I'm just saying we need at least a 50-50 or something where we can work together to come up with solutions as far as economic development is concerned. But uh, we can always change the makeup of the Industrial Development Authority Board um, since that is legally a separate entity from the Economic Development Alliance. Uh, like I said, currently it's just eight members of the Economic Development Alliance Board and <coughs> being a fiscal court representative uh, is one of them. Uh, if the fiscal court desires more representation on that Industrial Development Authority Board, um, you know, that could certainly happen. Um, well, to try to find a solution to it then, uh, could all members of the fiscal court be on that particular, particular board, whereas I mean, nobody has any problems. It'll just flow through. But uh, are you suggesting the five magistrates and then three members of the Economic Development Alliance? No, no. You could add the five onto the eight currently on there. The the law restricts the maximum amount of board members to eight. Eight, no more, less than three, no less than three. Yeah, from three to eight. Is your range on those? So that can be changed at any time. That's just a matter of filling out a form with the Secretary of State. Um, like I said, it was just done for sake of ease as existing Economic Development Alliance board members since we assumed that decisions on how that money would be spent would be made by the Economic Development Alliance board. Yeah. But um, I'm just probably thinking too far ahead, but the Industrial Development Authority, if it were primarily made up of, well, I, I, don't, I really don't foresee there being an issue. Um, and there may not be. First Chase. and foremost. Yeah. But, uh, how about we look into what you just brought up, see what we can do on that, put more. Can you make up the industrial yeah. element? Or? And then we can kind of look into that, and then if we yeah. need to have a special file, we can send it, we will. I'll dig, I, I do know the, the three and the eight rule, but I'll dig a little bit deeper in these statutes uh, on who an industrial development authority board would be made up of. I 
don't think there's any situations where just about checking. I'd say uh, I would just guess. I, don't, I wouldn't have any problem with say three, three from the court. Okay. Don't want to dominate dominate the uh, board, but I'd like to have at least three members of the court. Well, I'll be happy to to pass that along. Um, it, it, I, it's sort of a gray area because I don't think it's anyone's uh, obligation. You know who who makes up this board, yeah. so but I'm certain that the economic governance will want at least some representation. So yeah. it'll have to be discussed in my board okay. as well uh, before I make any determination. When, when could you find out something for us, Chase? We meet again in November. Uh, I think before your next meeting. So I can certainly take it to the end and see how they feel about it. But is our next meeting too late to pass these resolutions? Twentieth. But uh, I think we don't have to pass resolution. Yeah, so I, I'll have to get some clarification about these resolutions. Resolutions need to be passed. But like I said, uh, from what I read, the scope of the budget was what was under the timeline of November 9th. But if, that, if the scope of the budget depends on these resolutions, then it holds for both. And I might have to ask you all on a special for me. Okay, that sounds... But like I said, this, the makeup of the Industrial That's Development Authority board can be changed at any time with the Secretary of State. So there's no... There's the, no statute, the statute clearly requires it to go to you, uh, well, to the, to the economic assistance um, for the development. And then I imagine where the resolution comes in is on chapter, uh, section 8 of that statute that indicates that once they determine how much money the county will receive, the county has to have a resolution indicating that they followed the statute by transferring it to the economic development. And then second, uh, uh, that they have, that there's an indication that it is a properly funded uh, entity that they're sending it to uh, consistent with the statute. So, you know, OCDA would, would qualify. And I imagine that's what the resolutions are for. I thought you yes. said though OCDA wouldn't, they had to make up a separate board. Well, and they made up a totally. Uh, it has to go through the separate board, board of OC members. Well, I mean, it can be that. It's just the, the economic. Where's that part of the statute? So what? What Cam was wondering, can we put more? Some county economic development organizations are uh, legally an industrial development authority, but doing business as something else. Uh, like Henderson's is called Kindle. They have a DBA Kindle, but. On paper, they are the Henderson County Industrial Development Authority. So, when this organization was established, it was established basically just as an agency of the fiscal court, not as a separate legal entity. But per the statute, it has to be this Industrial Development Authority that received the funds. Yeah. And since we are not one, if we didn't set it up, or if we didn't uh, re uh, uh, put it back in place because it had gone dormant, then we would have nothing to. Receive the funds with. But since it's, I mean, the impression is that it goes to whoever your economic development wing is. I mean, that's the, that's the uh, motive of the law. Um, so that's why I just set up the IDA with the existing Economic Development Alliance board members, eight of them. But um, it says that the state should send your written request uh, to the fiscal court, um, and then we have to provide them in writing. Uh, these resolutions that are similar or the same in the nature within 60 days. When we receive these from DLG. We need to know that date because we have to we have to respond within 60 days <coughs> from that written request whenever that was made. Okay. Do you have any idea when it was? No, but we're well within the 60 days. Um, I'll just go back and take a look at what they came in. If the next court meeting will work, we'll do it. If not, we'll have a special call. I, I was ready to go with it tonight because it's so plain that this is what we have to do to get the TVA money, and this is what the legislature passed, and uh, I don't think we can change the state laws. And just, you know, just in best case scenario, everyone agrees on, you know, how this money is to be spent, but just... As an idea, most economic development organizations around the state have an arm's length relationship with their local government. And that is done intentionally to prevent any type of political influence 
filtering into decisions on mm -hmm. either project priority or how money is spent. So it's really, I understand where you all are coming from, but it's, it simply is a protection, um, not just with TVA money, but in anything that an economic development organization does, because you might have certain business interests, you might have friends or associates that you know might you know have in, in influence in any type of decision that we make in the economic development world. So it's simply to keep an arm's distance relationship with the political body. Well, to let you in on a little secret, Chase, politics plays an important role in every board and everything that is. And I understand what you're saying, but I, politics has a way of entering into every committee, every board, or whatever. So, yeah. But if you if you'll just get that information, see what we can come up with, and that we can all live with. And if we can, we'll David can call a special call meeting, and we'll address it. We'll do. Anything else? Thank you. I wouldn't draw my vote. Mm -hmm. right. Give me the personnel. Thanks very much. <laughs> Two personnel issues. I know. And then this badge and we'll move on here. Have two personnel issues. Uh, status change. The first one is. Uh, for the grounds, uh, is this seasonal, part-time, seasonal, seasonal, $8.68 an hour, Jesse Woods grounds at the park, it's an open slot, uh, I put up that name, Jesse Woods, roll call. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. The next one sitting to me was for the seasonal equipment operator at the road department. We only had one qualified worker, and, uh, St and uh, uh, Keith wanted uh, this one put up. It's Nicholas Render. He'll start at 12.25 an hour, uh, beginning 10.21. Uh, uh, yeah, seasonal, six, seasonal at 12.25 an hour. Um, real qualified person he's worked for school That's board somebody's birthday in maintenance for a long time 1021 mm -hmm. okay Barnes? yes johnson yes count yes morphew yes small yes. when will he start uh monday uh, then uh the next thing i have is dispatches up here y'all want to come up and tell us what you got did all of you get a copy of the handout from dispatch? This, this is yeah. power phone. Yeah. <coughs> yes, we gave you a uh, printout up there of a uh, solution we have for some problems here in our dispatch center. Uh, and as you all know, our budgets are smaller. You will see us coming to you more, asking for more things. Uh, we have issues and we can't pay for them. So I'm asking tonight for some money from you. Uh, just be up front with you. Tonight we want you to consider a, uh, a program that we need to purchase in dispatch. Uh, this program is called EMD. It's an uh, emergency medical dispatch. This, uh, this program uh, is compatible with our system that we have now. We don't have to buy any equipment for it. Uh, it's basically a computer program that we pay for. Uh, the purpose is to assist in 911 emergency calls uh, due to different kind of health issues, whether that be uh, diabetic emergencies, uh, heart issues, drownings, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, let, let's face it, uh, from our emergency services here in Hartford, uh, a lot of times to Rockport or to Fordsville, Elmich, uh, you know, Centertown, uh, all over the county, we're a long way off sometimes 
from the people that need our assistance. Our dispatchers with this program can give them some support when they call in and say, hey, I have a, a man here that's having a heart attack. Uh, this is a program we can pull up and give assistance on that heart attack. Here's what you need to do. Don't get me wrong, we're not doctors. We're not, uh, we're not emergency medical technicians. We are simply uh, reading from a program to help uh, with this emergency until the medical technicians get there. Um, we believe that this would help save lives in Ohio County. Uh, it, uh, it just gives pre-arrival uh, instructions until EMS maybe gets there. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we currently, the state law requires us to dispatch CPR. We are in the process of transferring our calls right now to Muleburg County. When we get that CPR call that comes in, because we don't have our entire staff uh, in compliance. We've got about 50%. It's hard to take everybody out there at once and train them and shut down dispatch. We have to do a little at a time. But I'm thankful that we can call on Muhlenberg County to help us out with those calls. They've been very helpful. Uh, we stay on the line so we can kind of learn to and listen to those calls. Um, but we're about 50% on that. Uh, I wanted, the law requires us to do a, an online transfer. Uh, Lisa and I talked about it. I just felt more comfortable if our dispatchers were trained yes. in CPR, hands-on training. You know, we, we can look at things on the computer and maybe not learn as much mm -hmm. as we can hands-on. So uh, I'm requiring them all to do hands-on CPR training and dispatch. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking us a little longer to get that. Um, but we, we're in the process of knocking those out. We, we are about 50% right now. Um, again, it, it, this uh, EMD is not limited to just CPR. It covers a broad spectrum of emergencies for uh, people that call in, what, you know, whatever that might be. Um, you know, the, one of the, the worst issues is that the program is $4,500. Uh, and we're here asking tonight for the court uh, <coughs> we could find that money from you guys uh, to help us out. We believe it would benefit the people of this county. Uh, if there were emergencies before that ambulance could get there, we could help maybe save a life with this program. Tracy, is there a, is there any kind of, I know with the new programs and everything, sometimes you don't, they don't work like they're supposed to. Is there any kind of guarantee, like if you get it, you're not happy with it? I mean, is it just a buy it and you're stuck with it, or is they got a... We've, we've talked with our uh, the programs through like at and and things that we have now. At least that's discussed that. And when our, all our dispatchers have to go through the five-week academy yeah. in Richmond, and this particular program is the one that's being taught. Okay. Uh, At the academy where we train on. Yeah. yeah. Who are you going to be well, passing this know. information on to? I'm sorry, Larry. Who are you going to be passing this information on to? The caller that calls in that may be there with a stroke mm -hmm. victim or a, a, yeah. a drowning victim or whoever that caller is that calls 911. We will be instructing them on what they need to do with this patient. Until the paramedic gets there. Until the ambulance gets yeah. yeah. Tracy, the they, they might not know to go ahead and perform CPR. But yeah, a lot, you know, a lot of people in the community are not familiar with CPR, and, and this would help help us give them instructions. Does it? Uh, call, and they ask us, "Can you tell me how to do CPR?" Right now, we can't. Yeah. Does this put you in liability if they was to die or something? Or? Well, I, you know, we talked about that. We feel like it works both ways. Well, if we're not know. giving them that. Uh, that advice and actually we're reading from a program that has been approved uh, if we didn't give that information to them we may be liable for not trying to help Especially them the that I guess yes. that was my question just to follow up with Larry was if, if, if the people if the dispatchers don't have the, the training and they're just reading off this particular program does that open us up for well, the uh, possibility of any kind of liability 
Yeah, before we even let them or we'll start this program, everyone has to be certified in it. <laughs> so it will be across the board certification. How much money are you talking about there to get everybody certified? It's online training, won't cost us anything. So is this uh, line down? Uh, what's the total cost we're talking about? That's what I thought. 45, 45. 45. Yeah, that was the only thing I was asking on the on the guarantee is uh, you know which y'all used it. If you you all used it before when you went to the training courses. Yes. But I I just know how sometimes like I use computer programs at work. It's supposed to be compatible and it's all yeah. 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 We just we just had a dispatcher that. Uh, came back from the academy and she was trained on this program. Okay. So we've got some dispatchers that are already trained. Yeah. Some of them have had it and have expired because we don't use yeah. it here. So we didn't I, redo that certification. How long is this program? How long will it be okay? Or how long is it not guaranteed so or whatever? Uh, before they before they change it again. Computer program. I'm sure they're going to update it in a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, probably. You know, uh, I don't really know how long it will last. But but the biggest thing then is find out if we have to, if we're mandated by law to update yeah. it or if it's still well, working oh, like well, yeah. No, yeah. It's hard it, to But we have an opportunity. A lot of our programs, they will send us updates that don't, doesn't cost us anything. If okay. there's changes to the program, uh, state law changes or something, they'll mm -hmm. update that program without yeah. any cost. I really, I really see where this could, this could actually save us. Save some we lives. Yes. Larry, we know, have potential it's, saving it's a long lives. Time yeah. Sometimes before that ambulance gets there, yeah. and, and yeah. no, no blame on them. It's a big county. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of area here to cover. Even something as simple as the Heimlich maneuver, yes. you know, where you could get a hold to their. That's something we can. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that covers like, that. You know, so. uh, one life, uh, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't price life, but yeah. uh, forty-five hundred dollars yeah. on life. And pressure points if they're bleeding yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't have a problem if we got the money. I don't Tracy, have a it looks like they do within the invoice that they sent you, or quote, excuse me, uh, for update, for annual software updates since quantity before, um, which would be the last portion. So that's within your price. Okay, yeah, I see that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, uh, I really think we should do it. We got a little reserve money, Judge? Or? Well, we, we will find that much. Okay, I'll make a motion. Motion for Larry Cam, second with Joe Barnes. How soon will you all have it where you can start utilizing it? Right now, we're in the process of swapping the system, upgrading that, which is that now actually what we've got now. We have been building a, another station for the last four years. Motion. And finally, this will complete that last station. So if we have a disaster here of any kind, it won't cost us anything. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
left in our line items to make it through the rest of the year in dispatch. So we're, we're already they think someone stepped on them. We've got it. We'll just say up, up while they were working on it. And then kind of pulled it out wherever they stepped on it, maybe on a corner where they run it up and jerked it loose. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and it was on our digital side of it. Link that. So, link that. So we could, we'd ask you to link. give us a little help on that. We'd greatly appreciate it. Let me get that paper. Okay. How much is that? Seven hundred and sixty-two dollars, I think, is what it was. I'm sorry, I left it. I'll get it over to Ann. Seven hundred and sixty-two. Yeah. Sure, we can put that along with the other. Come up with some money. What you think, David? Yes. Yeah. Let's put down there. How much was it again? Seven hundred and sixty-two. Seven hundred and sixty-two. Just get us that invoice. Okay, I'll get that. Put it on bills and claims next time. Okay. Thank you all much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. You can grab the viewing committee to get a link. I'm to, uh, Larry, uh, this Fern Road, Fern Lane that's on there, that's that road that we had to take in before Walt would give us a price on the water line to that lady we've been talking about all this time. Okay. Anna, Anna, Annabelle. Annabelle. To get her water line, we had to take a road in first. The viewing committee's been there. All the easements are signed. How much is it to take in, though? Well, she, she's getting it for me, the distance. It wasn't on these papers. Yeah, it's a policy of the water district not to. Well, they've had bad luck putting yeah. them across private property. I would say that's probably the reason for the uh, choice they made. So. The second one's on here won't get done today because the, the uh, uh, easements weren't properly done. They're done, but the gun sent papers back to them, went on the right form. While we're on the uh, subject of... Here it is. I'm just going to give a shout out to the uh, Rosine Fire Department. Four weeks ago tonight, I'd lost a lot of blood and my wife had to call an ambulance. And when they call an ambulance, they usually call the fire department to help load people. And the fire department was there 15 minutes before the Ambulance, ambulance, and I just, uh, I really appreciate our fire departments, all of them, every one of them in the county. They don't get many things. That's good. And first responders it's certainly make a difference. Yes, sir. Two tenths of a mile. And this was like two. four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I just want to thank them. Okay. It does. Uh, Takes a lot of time out of those people. Okay. Like right. It. Terrific. You want Joe? Takes a lot of time out of those people's lives. Yes, sir. They're dedicated. Ninety-nine percent of them. Yeah. And all the thanks they get, they usually get a Christmas dinner. Well, poor Joe puts on a good one. Christmas dinner. Poor Rosine does. Yeah, uh, it's it's some kind of fine eating. No. I'm trying to make it. Well, uh, I want to go ahead and, and do this. There's a little piece of information missing, but we'll get it and plug it back in. Is it two tenths long? Yes. And five houses. Good. Good enough. And it's, uh, we're going to call it Fern Lane. It is off of uh, Baystown Road. 505 or Baystown Road? Baystown Road. It's off Baystown Road. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, yeah. we've been up there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I would make that motion if you want to second that. I will second it. It's been a long time in the making. Yes, seven years that I've been working on it. And, and uh, or eight, maybe other people longer than that. Can you pass that being resolution 2019-7? Yes. yes, that resolution number. Okay. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Mo Fern Lane is now then, and uh, Charlie, you can tell Walt and go ahead and price that water line for us now. Uh, do you know how long that's going to be, Judge? How long Fern Lane is? About two tenths. We had a viewing committee. Yeah, yeah. viewing committee approved it today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Justin, good with all of them. Yeah. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. I mean, if he can get forward it to me. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, I've yeah. got a checklist. Yeah. It says A, B, C, and D about opening yeah. these roads. Miranda does it too. I never get anything, Harley. It's done there. That one we got. 
Roundwood, we don't have all of our documentation. It's on the agenda. It won't happen tonight. Um, and I need a very short closed session to talk about, as you see there, that section B on that KRS 61810, chapter 1, section B has to do with land acquisition, has property acquisition. That's what we're going to close session so about. So Just okay. Motion. Okay. And so you'll second You got a I'll say yeah. Is that deed in here, Miranda? No, there's still a few back there. Okay, uh Motion to, motion to go back in open session. Second it. Everyone, second Blair County, everyone in favor, sit down. Oh. <laughs> I make motion we give the judge permission to sign the deed for property with, how was it, how was it like going to say it, Justin? Uh, probably that uh, the, judge, the judge can execute a deed uh, accepting certain real property conveyed by T.C. Sanford. Uh, located in Hartford on what street is that? that street is on? Uh, it, Apple Alley. Apple Alley, that's right. Apple Alley, uh, so long as it's free, clear, ain't all liens. That's what I was going to say. Isn't it Apple? Apple Alley goes down. Uh, that's that's right behind your in the courthouse right here. That's that's Apple okay, Alley. Okay, so right what's here. the one? It's that, uh, why is it what, uh, Street Green Court? Washington? No, Washington. Washington's in front of the King. Hang Street. on, let me look on the map. How about it, Charlie? It's, it's Apple Alley runs down there. It runs all the way back here to the. No, Apple Alley runs beside the courthouse all the way down to the other side. The what well, runs back Apple towards the Methodist Church? Apple Alley was right here between this house and the drug courthouse. No. It's, no. It, it's Center Street. Is it Center Street? Yeah. Not, I'm it's the corner of Center and Apple Alley. Hold on. Oh, you got there it is. Yeah. But the center goes back towards the Methodist Church back that way. Yeah. yeah Whose district is that? He ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Alley? East Center Street and Apple Alley. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and call roll on it, man. Uh, hold on. Did you get your first and third segment? Charlie? No. Well, who's seconded? No. I need second. Yeah. 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 All right. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. You're to take this in the morning to TC, get him to uh, him and Ann to sign it, bring it back from the Miranda to uh, to uh, copy my to notarize my signature, and then take it back to Best for recording. Okay. Is that the deed? Did you That's get the deed. To him? No, hold on. Hold on. Sorry. I just brought you something else too. Did I set it down for you? What? Can you sign that and give it to him? That's his resolution. Whose resolution? Charlie's. Charlie, here's your resolution too. I'll get a copy from you later. Here you go. You need it more than I do. It. Yeah, and get make sure to give her a copy. Oh, thank you. Is there any committee reports? I don't think anything's met as far as I know. I don't think so either. So uh, while he's looking at that, let's go ahead and start with Sam. Uh, Jason. No, thank you. Joe. No, not right now. Uh, Larry. I'll tell you, I do have one thing. Okay. We had a little issue on gravel road. We had some gravel that seemed like it was uh, causing some issues with tires. Uh, Actually, some of them was mine, my wife's, and then there was a few other people that had some issues with tires after we graveled the road. Now, I think we've got to take care Which of Which road was it? It was a uh, pond run. Oh, my goodness. So, and uh, we was questioning, was it rock or what? But 
after the one person took the tire and had it fixed and they took several pieces of rock out of the tire that was on the inside that pushed all the way through. Out Should we? Five. No, this was a um, pond run. We maybe should take and take it what to was? the. That was. Keith looked into one? it. Yeah. Keith okay. looked into it, and what he did, he went. I think he went down there and graded it up real loose, and then. But we we then probably the, should uh, taken it to the uh, quarry people too. Base town. I think they talked to the quarry, but anyway, just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. So if we end yeah. up having any more trouble, we might need to look into it more. We had the same problem up on uh, Base Town Road too. Oh, okay, That's he, he was right. Called. That's what he said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, we probably grade them up, but we need to check with our crusher and make sure that they don't, you know, what's that? The rocks had got through inside the target. I think the deeper down in the ground they go, the harder the rock gets, and then when it when it's harder to crush, the crusher makes more sharp well, points on it. Yeah, the harder it is. Sharp points on. It's questionable what actually might have got on. It looked like the rock was a little large. And so we looked into it. And, but anyway, we just need to kind of watch that issue, maybe. Yeah, well, I'll make sure that we get with the quarry people on it, too, that, that they're, uh, um, that the grass, make sure they're on top of it. Uh, Larry? No. Larry? Yeah, we need Scotty's going to do our black topping. Glad you asked that. They're starting, they're going to be here tomorrow to do that, the, start the prep work. And they're going in this order. They're going J.T. King. We might throw Clay Shown in since I didn't think about it because it's out that way. I was just looking at Flex and everything. Then they're going to do your Salem. Then they're going to do 19 school. Then we'll take it from there. And then they'll keep them up right on the move. I wish, they'd, I wish the know. weather would warm up a little bit. I do too. When are they going to do the uh, Salem? After, uh, they, after, they do, um, after they do J.T. King and... Um, uh, Clay Shannon. And then they're going to uh, 19 school. 19 school. So they could possibly get uh, uh, Schultztown while they're there, I reckon. Probably so. And then when are they going to do our uh, flex? Well, part, some of this I'm talking about is flex. Yeah, the JT King. JT King is okay. flex. And Sal Salem's flex. Okay. So, see, we are talking about well, something. Well, see, I've got uh, Salem Church Road, too. We we'll reckon they'll get it while they're there. It would make sense. We'll keep working okay. with Scotty's and say, we want to get it all as quick as we can. That's all I have. Okay. Justin? No, Justin. Anybody in the audience got anything for the good of the body? If not, let's adjourn. Oh. <laughs>